Thank you for downloading this podcast from the British Theatre Guide. For more information about British Theatre Guide, please visit britishtheatreguide.info. I'm Steve Orme, the Midlands editor of the British Theatre Guide, and I'm at the Theatre Royal in Nottingham, which is hosting a classic thriller season for the 31st consecutive year. A company of 14 actors will perform four different plays over four weeks, starting with Frederick Knott's Wait Until Dark. Two of the actors, Anna Mitchum and David Martin, are regulars in the season. This will be Anna's fifth summer at the Theatre Royal. She explains why she keeps coming back. It's just so much fun. The combination of the variety of different parts you get to play each year, combined with the challenge of having to put these all together so quickly, and so far at least, succeeding... <laughs> I mean, never say never, but so far we've seemed to have succeeded. The, the combination of those two things is just really exciting for me. And I, everyone here is my friend now. I've got lots of friends here, and it's, it's really nice to come up to a city that I really, really love and spend three or four weeks with a bunch of people that I really love, playing a variety of different characters in hardly any time. Uh, it's just really exciting. It make, makes you... It makes you work really hard. It makes you do a lot of thinking. I think it's I think it's good for us. The ideal situation in a rep company is for an actor to do one long part one week and then a short part the next week. Does it always work out like that? Not always, no. Um, this year, I've definitely got one long part in the first one, a shorter one in the second and a shorter one in the third. So um, it does ease off a little bit for me. I've got my big one coming coming up first uh, but it certainly doesn't always work out that way now <laughs> the first one you're playing Susie Henderson in uh, Frederick Knox's Wait Until Dark and uh, I imagine that's challenging in quite an unusual way she's blind so yes you know you've got all the usual pressures and then on top of that you've got to be blind which is not easy <laughs> partly because you need to be able to see when you're not a blind person to find your way around the stage but it's just another challenge to add to the pile of challenges and I'm embracing it and um, enjoying it actually and I'm kind of finding my feet with it and um, I think I'm slowly, slowly becoming happier with the way that I am portraying blind and I hope that I don't offend anybody <laughs> What do you make of the actual play? Oh, it's brilliant. I, I love Frederick Nock. I did Dial M for Murder in this season a few years ago. And um, although the two plays are very different, he definitely has a style that he writes in. And it's so thought out. And, um, the, you know, you, all through the script, you've got these author's notes and these uh, little uh, bits where he has to explain everything because it's so complicated. And you might find that, oh, you, wanna, you might cut a little stage direction. And then a few scenes later, you'll realise, oh, we can't cut that stage direction because over here is the outcome of that tiny little move in that first scene. So well, the, the brain he must have had to have um, put these stories together, I don't know. He's great. I like it. And after that, you're playing Claire Norman in the Francis Durbridge Murder with Love. Durbridge always seems to be popular with audiences here, doesn't he? <laughs> he does, yes. I think probably because he was so prolific in the thriller department. So there's... Uh, uh, so much choice uh, from his back catalogue I think sticking one of them in is uh, always a winner partly I think because of the, the 70s really kind of comes to life on the Theatre Royal stage with the Durbridges and the design and uh, Jeff's costumes we really really go to town on the 70s <laughs> After that it's um, Anybody for Murder the, uh, the Brian Clemens and Dennis Spooner play and you actually played Susie Stevens in that play when it was in the Chesterfield Pomegranate 70th anniversary season so is that an advantage having already done that once? It really is, yeah, I'm quite relieved <laughs> it's my second Susie of the season but yeah, having done it before not only in Chesterfield but a couple of weeks ago in Eastbourne as well it's really quite fresh in our minds or it should be so um, that is we know with all this work on Susie Henderson they have to do, being able to not have to put too much thought into Susie Stevens is quite nice. <laughs> Final play, that's um, Dangerous Obsession by N.J. Crisp. Now, I think some people might know him more for his TV work because he did things like Dixon of Doc Green and Dr. Finley's Casebook. So 
is he able to write well for the stage too? I do believe so, yeah. I'm not very familiar with this piece, as I'm not in it. (laughs) But from what I have read of it, that's going to be another kind of psychological, very tense piece of theatre to watch, much like, I think, the first one, although, of course, in a completely different way. Do you wish you were in it? Do you wish you were in all four of them, or are you glad of a break at the end? Of course I wish I was in it, yes. (laughs) I'm an actor, I want to be in everything. (laughs) You're playing three characters in three different plays must be a bit of a breeze when you compare it to to this season at Chesterfield when you're in all seven yes uh, that was something else entirely it's amazing to look back on it now and you just think how did you do it and I think how I did it was to pre-learn everything before we started to a certain degree so that uh, when you came to each new week of rehearsals you didn't have to start from scratch every time so when I was doing my pantomime last Christmas whenever I didn't have a show I was there making sure I was ahead of the game on all those seven parts (laughs) Because you have only a short rehearsal period for this season do you have to come with preconceived ideas about the character that you're playing? Yes, very much so We've all had to do quite a lot of homework on our own and bring what we think our characters are into the room and then hopefully that will all, they'll all marry quite well. If not, there's always space to, to make changes and things. But um, it's, it's absolutely essential to, to, to come in with um, quite a confident idea of how you, how you want to play the part, I'd say. Does much actually change in rehearsal? Yes. <laughs> yes, a great deal changes. You, you know, when, when it's just you and your head and, and the script, there's only so much that, that you can conjure by yourself. And, um, and, of course, you're just looking at it from the point of view of your character and everyone else is looking at it from the point of view of their characters. When you get into the room, there's all sorts of recalibrations you have to make. But um, having a, quite a solid idea of the, at least the kind of grounding or basis of your character is definitely essential, I would say. Karen Henson is directing all four plays. Does it help that you've worked with her before and know what she wants? I think so, yeah. I think there's, um, with all of us now, because we all know each other quite well, we kind of understand each other's languages and and the kind of shortcuts that we can take to communicate those things between us. It definitely helps. It feels like a, a, a safe space. Okay, so what's next for you after the thriller season? That's a very good question. I think I'm going to go on holiday. <laughs> um, uh, work-wise, I am free now until pantomime, so um, hopefully I'll get some little bits to fill in the months in between. But I do certainly intend to go on a nice long holiday. You did. Uh, you played the fairy in Sleeping Beauty at the Belgrade in Coventry last Christmas. What are you doing this year? This year I'm going up to Inverness and... For the first time in 14 years, I will not be appearing in the panto. I'm assisting on it. So I'll be there, the other side of the table, uh, telling people what to do. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> and uh, after that, have you any ambition that you want to fulfil? Oh, so too many. <laughs> I need to finish this screenplay that I've been writing for over a year. Uh, that's, the, that's the big kind of personal ambition that I've got for the next few months. And uh, is there any hope that that might actually get to the screen? I do have hope. I'm trying not to think too far ahead of myself at the moment because um, I still have a long way to go before coming to that point, but that is the, the long-term plan for it, yes. David, you're back in the classic thriller season. You're a regular with both Tabs Productions and Rumpus Theatre Company who are co-producing the season. Why did you want to come back this year? They're both Tabs and Rempus, both fantastic companies to work for. Um, as you say, I've, I've worked for them both for a long time now, I think over 15 years or so um, since I first worked for Tabs. I love it. I always love working for them, coming back, and they've built up a core group of actors that all work for them, so we all know each other really well. We all have a shorthand when working together, which is obviously really helpful when you only have a week to rehearse. So we, we know each other, we get on together, we have a great time doing it, and, um, and I'm always really proud of the shows we put on, and in spite of the short time we have to do it. We, um, we always feel like we've achieved something at the end of the week, so that's, that's a, a real sense of personal fulfilment when you get to the end of it. Some summers you've done outdoor theatre. Yes. But there again, last year you were here, in, right. in this season, so which do you prefer? 
Oh. <laughs> um, do you know, people often ask me, what's, what's the favourite thing that you've done? And I'm in a really fortunate position to be able to say that I, I don't know because I'm so proud of so many things I've done. And I, I think it, it's the sort of... I know it's a bit of a cop-out, but it's kind of the same answer, really. I love doing the open-air Shakespeare. It's um, a, an amazing way to spend the summer. Obviously, you get soaked and cold and wet, but there are days when it's like it is at the moment where it's scorching summer and everyone else is moaning that they're stuck in some hot, sweaty office and you're outside in some of the most beautiful parts of the country, National Trust properties, castles, stately homes, outside doing physical work, building the set and then performing Shakespeare in that glorious weather and, and sometimes there's, there's nothing better. But equally, um, when I took a break from that and came here last year and, and this year as well, I love the, the challenges that these rep seasons present and, uh, and, and the company that we're working with and the, the audience that we get here, the regular following that's built up over the years, um, there's, that, that is equally fulfilling and just as much fun. So it's really hard to choose between the two, but like I say, very, very fortunate to have those options. You're in three of the plays this year. Do you find it difficult doing one in the evening and then rehearsing the following weeks the next afternoon? It's funny. There's, there's a... Uh, th- there's a real sort of feeling when you, you open on the Tuesday night and then you turn up in rehearsals on Wednesday morning, start something completely fresh, and, and it, but knowing that you've still got to keep that other play going through the rest of the week, it, it is a, a bizarre feeling that you don't get very often, but it's, it's exciting and it's thrilling. And the only time it's... It, it, well, it's, it's obviously difficult in the sense of you're, you're so busy all day and then switching into the other play in the evening and, and there's, there's very little time off, but... But it's, it's a, a really satisfying challenge. And it's, I don't find it difficult in the way that most people often think that it might be, in the sense that don't you get confused about your characters and you know, the lines and things. The only time it would be difficult then is when the plays are similar. And luckily for me, <laughs> I haven't yet had one where the plays I'm rehearsing and performing are too similar. But, but I can imagine if they are similar and your characters are similar and some of your lines are similar... Um, which which can happen. You have plays that sort of have scenes that are very, very similar and you could sort of slip into the wrong scene and then end up going down the wrong path. But fortunately, so far for me, that's not happened. <laughs> you were in the season at Chesterfield Pomegranate as well. Mm. You were in five of the plays there. So is this less taxing for you? For me, this season is uh, almost like a, a bit of a rest after that, yes. Um, in that, um, yes, I'm in, I'm in the three of these plays, but I have slightly smaller parts than I had in the, in the pomegranate season earlier this year. So that season, as, as Anna was saying as well, was just crazy. As we were going through, we were thinking, how on earth, why, what are we doing and why are we doing it and how did we get here? <laughs> By the end of the season, I think we all went a little bit crazy. But... Um, as I was saying before, that sense of achievement when you actually get through that and um, uh, and you come out the other side and you think, wow, we actually we did that. I don't know how, but we did it. And not many people get to say that to to do seven plays in a row. And I was in five of them, um, and I was in all seven. Not many people get an opportunity to do that. So to be able to say that you've done it, that's something that we've always got, which is which is which I'm very proud of. You start the season with Wait Until Dark, and you're playing Croker. Yes. What sort of character is he? He's very stupid. <laughs> um, he's, he's one of... Uh, th- well, there are two con men who've worked together and a third con man comes in and, and ropes them to- together into his con to try and then con this blind woman. Um, I won't go too much further into the plot. There's all sorts of twists and turns and surprises to watch out for. But, yeah, my character Croker is, is sort of... He's, he's the, the stupid one that just kind of goes along with everyone else and doesn't really know what's happening, uh, which is quite fun to play. And then after that, you're playing uh, Ernest Foster in Murder with Love. Is that part particularly different? It couldn't be much more different. He's a, he's a lawyer and very intelligent. <laughs> yes. But yes, uh, so it's, it, that's one of the, the great things about these seasons is you, you switch vastly from one week to the next in the characters that you're playing and, and, and you get to show a range that often you might not get to otherwise and, um, because you have to be cast throughout the whole season. So um, yeah, you get to play parts that you wouldn't necessarily always do. So it, it's a lot of fun. And then you're playing uh, Edgar Chambers in Anybody for Murder, which you've played before at the Pomegranate, yet another different character. Uh, yes, he's 
much more intelligent than he lets on, but he appears to be a bit silly, and, uh, and he's a, a drunk, uh, a drunk writer on a Greek island. Um, and I sort of swan in and out of that show and, uh, and just really enjoy myself while everyone else does the hard work of uh, dealing with the plot. So, um, so it's, a, it's a, a great fun show to do that one. And uh, like you say, it's, it's nice for us that we've done it before already, so it, it takes a little bit of the pressure off us as we go into the, the business end of the season. And it's a bit different from the others because it's a farce, but uh, plenty of twists in it. That's right. It's it's both a farce and a thriller. It's an extremely complicated, cleverly worked out plot in terms of, of, of the thriller. It's just as, as clever and, um, and detailed as, as any of the other thrillers that we do, but it's presented in the format of a farce as well. So it, it's, it's really, really funny. Um, it's, a, it's a great fun show to do. You've often worked for Rumpus Theatre Company and you've, you've played doomed young men in uh, some of their gothic horror tours. So will the acting skills that you've used then be useful for this season too? Absolutely, yeah. Um, yes, I got into a habit uh, uh, at one stage of working for Rumpus of, of always playing the young man who who either dies or goes missing or ends up cursed and in one form or another just <laughs> had a lot of bad luck. <laughs> um, but um, but yeah, those those sorts of shows are, are fantastic experiences to to work on and learn from because, as you know, they're often sort of two hander plays that Rumpus produces, and um, having to to work with just just two actors on stage to build the tension and the the atmosphere of those gothic horrors and things like that. Um, it's, you, you learn a lot while you're working on those about just how to hold the stage, what, how to present things to an audience, and then that's transferable skills. Into, into every play that you do then. So, um, yeah, they've been fantastic experiences. Karen Henson's directing you in, uh, in all these plays in this season. Can you suggest any changes or, or is she a bit of a dictator as far as directing is concerned? <laughs> I thought you were asking, could I suggest any changes about what she's done? <laughs> um, no, she's brilliant. Uh, Karen's fantastic to work for. She's, uh, she comes in with a very clear idea of what she wants, but she's absolutely... Uh, approachable if, uh, as it has to be if people have other ideas about oh actually my character would do this or this needs to happen so should we approach it this way Karen will always listen and, and try things out and, um, but it, it's, uh, it's a collaborative process the, ho- the whole thing always and uh, we, just, we work together on it everyone presents their ideas and then between us we figure out the best way to approach things but, um, but Karen's a fantastic director to work for And what's next for you after, after the thrill season's over? Well, I'm actually uh, in the middle of moving house at the moment, uh, temporarily homeless. I've, I've moved out, but I haven't moved in, so it's, it's nice to be here for a month and give myself somewhere to live for the time being. Um, but um, I've got a, a bit of a break after this season, but then later on in the year I'm going to be working at my local theatre, the Brew House in Taunton, uh, doing their family Christmas show, The Railway Children. So very excited about that. And uh, any long-term ambitions or plans? Just for all of this to continue, I think. Uh, I, I really love doing all of this rep theatre and touring theatre um, that I've been doing. And, uh, yeah, I, long may it continue. The classic thriller season runs at the Theatre Royal in Nottingham from the 30th of July until the 24th of August. You've been listening to a podcast from British Theatre Guide. For more information, please visit britishtheatreguide.info.